Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to introduce you to our company, Casia Therapeutics. Uh, we're listed on the ASX, our ticker is KZA, and put simply, we are a company focused on the development of new cancer drugs. And there's really four things that I want to tell you today about our company. And I've listed them here, and I hope that in aggregate, they are reasons why you will consider it for your investment portfolios. The first thing I want to say is that the disease we are trying to treat is a disease called glioblastoma. It's the most common and the most aggressive form of brain cancer. And the thing that you need to know about glioblastoma is that there is only really one drug available for this disease, and it only works for one out of every three patients. So this is a huge unmet need, and it's about a one and a half billion dollar market, but really only one drug, and a drug that serves that market very poorly. Secondly, our drug, which we call GDC84, was invented by a company called Genentech. Now, Genentech are the most successful developer of cancer drugs in history. They're owned by Roche, a Swiss pharmaceutical company. They sell about $36 billion a year of cancer drugs. They developed our drug, they invested tens of millions of dollars in it, but then decided that they were not strategically focused on brain cancer. So we were able to bring it in and to take it forward under our watch. So it has that incredible pedigree, it has the very, very best in the business have worked on it. And this is a drug that has already completed what we call phase one human trials. So this isn't something that exists only in a test tube and is something that's a long way away from market. This is a real drug that is now in patients through our people taking this drug today and we are uh, very, very close to seeing data. And indeed, we will see data within the next couple of months out of our ongoing studies. And uh, potentially, this data positions us both for partnering transactions and indeed for a commercial product within a matter of just a few years. Finally, we do have cash in the bank. We completed a very successful institutional placement at the end of last year. It was cornerstoned by a fund called Platinum Asset Management out of Sydney, a sector specialist institutional investor. So I'm not here to ask you for money. We're here really just to introduce the company to people and to, uh, to start to kind of raise its profile. So let me go into these points in a little bit more detail. First of all, uh, glioblastoma, as I say, it is the most common and the most aggressive form of brain cancer. It is as about as bad as cancer gets. With best available treatment, survival is about 12 to 15 months. And although it's always a little macabre sometimes to think of these diseases in terms of the people that they touch, it sometimes helps to put a human face to this. And so this is the cancer that claimed uh, Senator John McCain in the US last year. Uh, here in Australia, Matt Price, who would be familiar to anybody who follows the ABC Insiders program, this is uh, the disease that took his life. Uh, Stan Zamanek, for those who used to watch the Beauty and the Beast program, Andrew Olley, another ABC journalist, and then for those who are fans of the show RPA a few years back, Professor Chris O'Brien, uh, after whom the Chris O'Brien Lifehouse at RPA Hospital is named, this is... Uh, unfortunately, the disease that he suffered from. So it is a disease that can affect anybody at any point in their life. And unfortunately, the treatment of glioblastoma has really just not improved at all. And I've shown you here for comparison, if you look at lung cancer, there have been over 20 new drugs approved for lung cancer in the last two decades. We've made enormous progress in the treatment of lung cancer. But when we look at glioblastoma at this most common and most aggressive form of brain cancer, the larder is bare. We've really made almost no progress at all. And in fact, this drug here, Avastin, that you see, that drug is really only used for a very small number of patients right at the end of their disease. So in practice, this drug, Temidar, also known as Temozolomide, is the only real drug available for patients. Now, the thing about temozolomide is that it works for about one patient out of every three. And for one third of patients, it will extend their life by about seven months. And if you have terminal cancer, that's very meaningful. But for the other two thirds of patients, two out of three patients, it extends life by about 11 days. And unfortunately, that's not meaningful. And it's not without side effects. So that's where we come in. We're trying to develop our drug for the two-thirds of patients who will not respond to the only available treatment. 
So how does it work? Well, we target, we're an example of what's sometimes referred to as precision medicine or personalized medicine. We target a control mechanism in the human body called PI3K. Not a very catchy name, but that's science for you. Now, our drug switches off this PI3K control mechanism. And we've, we've, we know that for a lot of cancers, the reason they start is that this PI3K mechanism is kind of locked on. It's like getting the gas pedal on your car stuck. So we switch it back off, and that stops the tumor from growing and it allows the patient to live longer and allows us to treat the disease. So why this matters to you as investors is that there are already three PI3K inhibitors on the market. They've been approved by the FDA. We know they work. This isn't speculative, this isn't hypothetical, this isn't something really even experimental. This is mainstream medicine, this is proven science. So what makes our drug different? Well, the, the trouble with most cancer drugs is they can't get into the brain. They are repelled by the so-called blood-brain barrier. And this is a challenge for treating multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, you name it. Most drugs do not get into the brain. Our drug has been specifically engineered to cross the blood-brain barrier. It gets into the brain very well, and it is the only drug of its kind that is able to do so. So our drug has this unique advantage for brain cancer. It is this combination of proven science with the ability to get into the brain and therefore to treat brain cancer. Now, I mentioned that we completed a phase one human study here. Now, phase one studies are always safety studies, and the good news is our drug looks very safe. The common side effects are mouth ulcers and an increase in blood sugar, which are very easily manageable side effects in advanced cancer. But more importantly, even though the study was not really designed to show efficacy, we got multiple signals to show that the drug is in fact working. And uh, I've shown here, just because a picture says a thousand words, an example of what this looks like. This is a brain scan, specifically it's what we call a PET scan. And in the left-hand image, you can see this very dark, ominous-looking, shadowy area. That's brain tumor. And in the right-hand image, you can see that's largely filled in. It looks much more healthy and fluffy and, and uh, lively. That's success. And we think if these kinds of results are borne out in the larger studies that we're now undertaking, this should be a very viable commercial product. So where are we? Well, we've completed all our milestones for 2018, including receipt of orphan designation early last year. And we're now well advanced in a phase two study looking at our drug. We'll be reporting data, excuse me, reporting data likely in the next quarter, so sometime in the next couple of months, and then more definitive data later in the year. For completeness, I've shown here, we do also have a second drug, which there isn't time to talk about today, but we're developing that in ovarian cancer. So this is our study here, glioblastoma, um, but I'd just like to add that in addition to the work we're doing, some of the top experts in the world in brain cancer are also doing research on our drug free of charge. Uh, and so Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, part of Harvard Medical School, is doing a study looking at our drug in breast cancer that has spread to the brain. When we, we know that when breast cancer spreads to the brain, it becomes very, very difficult to treat. And so the team at Dana-Farber, uh, excuse me, are looking at our drug. They've started a phase two study to look at that. So that's a great uh, free ride, if you like, for us, but a great opportunity to learn more about our drug and potentially open a new indication. We also have St. Jude Children's Hospital in the US is looking at our drug in a childhood brain cancer called DIPG. So we have now three clinical studies of GDC84 underway, all of them independent, only one of them funded by us, and then of course uh, potential future collaborations and our own ovarian program. So we're not an all or nothing bet, we're not a, a binary opportunity, we, we, have, uh, we have multiple horses in the race. And each of these are very substantial markets. Glioblastoma, we estimate at least a one and a half billion dollar market, and then breast cancer brain mets, probably two or three times that. I'll just say in concluding that uh, we completed a placement at the end of last year. We raised $4.2 million. We're funded through calendar 2019, so we can achieve these, uh, these key data readouts. And we're listed on the ASX. We're uh, after a you know, little bit of an eventful 2018. We've started to see some fair value return to the stock in the early part of this year. The slide's already out of date. I think we're up a little bit on that. So long may it continue.
So ladies and gentlemen, I'll just conclude by saying companies working in our space, when they're successful, are able to realize very significant value from investors. These are some of our peer companies in the United States. You can see the kind of valuation they command. And uh, we hope that if we're able to succeed in Casio, we'll be able to provide at least a commensurate return to investors. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, look forward to talking to many of you later in the day. Thank you.